This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL, but I got to tell you, we're the ones that do encourage you to like and share them on social media because it's time for the African-American scene brought to you by Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie and hosted by Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. I have to tell you, I started uh, now that the COVID uh opened up some things i got i went back to my uh water aerobics am i on there what, oh you're not hearing it yeah okay you're in there now yeah okay. yeah 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 I, I got back to my water aerobics and i'll tell you what if you haven't tried that that's quite a workout i'm sitting up here now and i'm a little sore from this morning uh so wednesday mornings at nine and this uh, lady, she's in fantastic shape. She gives you the workout. I was going to say, yeah, in, in water, we're always a little bit lighter. You would think that, uh, but you wouldn't think there'd be that much resistance that you'd experience to. Well, you, we have uh, water dumbbells. Oh. And then she gives us various exercises. And you know, for people like you and I who've had hip surgery, uh -huh. Water aerobics is the best thing in the world because you don't put any pressure on the joints. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, but I'm here and hopefully I'll do a better show than I did last week. Last week, for some reason, I was out of sorts and that was just, I did not do a very good job last week. But anyway, I'm here tonight. And uh, we have a new mayor in Port St. Lucie, Shannon Martin. Uh, and uh, there's going to be a District 3 runoff. I, I want to get back to that again, though, because I, I, one of my questions, if you, this is the first time you listen to me, I give you a list of topics. And then I encourage you to call up and comment on the topics and I usually get into the topic a little deeper. Um, topic number one, is Port St. Lucie, you know, the, the Port St. Lucie races are considered nonpartisan. Do you think Port St. Lucie City Council is nonpartisan? Just interested in your thoughts about that. Number two, I'm going to give you party splits. How St. Lucie County breaks down Democratic versus Republican versus non-party affiliates. The other topic, number three, can we work together? Do you think it's possible for Democrats and Republicans to work together? I've had this discussion recently with some of my friends and uh, unfortunately for the first time that I can remember in my life, most people are saying, no, it's not possible. What say you? And that phone number is 3401590. That's 3401590. Topic number four. Does truth matter to you? Does truth matter to you when it comes to your politics? Does it matter whether or not you're being told the truth or not? Topic number five. Okay. Go ahead what, and complete what, all the topics so they can all hear. I am. I am. Uh, topic number five. What should we do about the Haitians? And the last topic, with all of the tremendous amount of information coming out about Trump, do you still support Trump? And if you do, please tell me why. 
Again, that phone number is 340-1590. That's 340-1590. And we got Steve on line one. Yes, Steve. Uh, well, question number one is <laughs> and, you know, I've been here 18 years as a citizen, so I've seen them come and go. Um, the other one, I don't know what to do with the Haitian, um, but they say there's 30,000 in Colombia waiting to come up, so I have no idea what to do there. But on the other thing, can we come together as Americans? Yes. If we come together as Americans, and forget this full droppings about Republican or Democrat. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. I'm glad to hear you say that because most of what I've been getting recently is no. People just think we're hope hopelessly deadlocked and that there's no chance that we're going to be able to bridge the divide, which is, you know, uh, it's courage is the lack of being discouraged. Yeah. And that's all it takes is just a little courage. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say was, uh, we have a problem in Reno with them, people running over the Sandhill cranes, two more, a baby and a mother died Sunday. But the new mayor, Shannon Martin, I texted her. She was right on top of it. That's a federal bird. So we're going to get together. The feds are going to contact her and see what we can do about informing people about you got to stop for the birds. Yeah. We yeah. can't do that. We had 30 out here when I first moved here. Now we got about eight. Wow. So it's got to stop, but we won't have any. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Uh, when yeah. I was at the golf course this past weekend, um, evidently one had gotten hit with a golf ball and his foot was all mangled up. Uh, he was, he was, uh, he or she was alive and kicking, but he was really limping bad, you know. Well, I talked to the feds today and they said under the old law, that bird was well protected. And then the bleach bomb bozo got in and repealed it but then biden got in and repealed the repeal so now they're <laughs> drafting a new migratory bird law that's going to protect them again yeah well, that's uh, good but this is crazy i mean this is part of this chain of life the cycle of life and if you take a link out you break the chain yeah. well and you know something i i my wife let me give her credit many years ago said something to me that struck a chord and I've been repeating it ever since. She said, you know, you may have questions about some of the animal protection or some of the plant life protection, but she said, you don't get a do over. So are you gonna err on the side of caution or are you gonna throw caution to the wind? And Ever since oh, no, I'm going on the side of caution. Oh, yeah. I can li listen every time. You know, they come, they have a route, and they come and tear up my yard regularly. Yeah. I don't care. I bought a bag of fill dirt, you know, the soil, potting soil, and I just put it in the holes they make. Yeah. And the grass grows back. Yeah. 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 No big deal. We missed our so, family uh, of four know, Sandhill Hill Cranes. America come around has got to come yes. together as Americans. Yes. Not as a party. We do. We do. Party right. is weak-minded people that have to think as a group. Americans are individuals that act as an individual and join as a group. Well, as, so as I'd usual, rather be an American. Thank you, Steve. You're always it's a pleasure you. always having you on. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, he's right. Um, again, the phone number is three four zero one five nine zero. The Haitians is a tough one. I really do. I think that's a real tough one. They, their president was killed. They had another earthquake and they had the other one that was just two years ago. Um, do I think that we can handle every immigrant that wants to come to our shores? No, I don't think so. But do I do I have a special uh, 
feeling for what the Haitians are going through? Yes, I do. And it's not because they're black. It's because they've been through hell. They really have. And uh, I saw a guy on there uh, yesterday, they were interviewing him. And he said, he said, life there is terrible. He said, people toting guns. It's not safe in the streets. You know, and I'm like, I don't know. Somehow we have to try to find a, a place to help some of these people. We can't take the whole country, but I do think we can provide some uh, relief for a, a, seg a segment of, of the Haitians. We could probably try to inspire our, our government with the policies for, for immigration to speed up some of the processes that work to become a citizen. Yes, you know, yes. They, they need to speed that up. It shouldn't have to take a person's whole life. So that when they can, you know, live a few more years as a as a citizen, they need to be able to become a citizen much faster. And I think that's, that's part of that problem. Yeah, Just getting that process paperwork. It's a paperwork mess right now. Here's the other part of it, where I, I come down. And again, that number is 3401590. That's 3401590. I, I am generally sympathetic to uh, their plight. And it is, it is a plight. They have been, been through a lot. But then when I go and I say, you know, we need to spend millions for helping the Haitians, and then I look at all the people living on tent in tents in uh, LA. I go, well, what are we going to do about them? You know, the people Roxy talks about on her show. Well, what are we going to do about them? They need help. And they're American citizens. What, what are we doing to help them? I, I don't know. I, I truly, truly have mixed emotions about it. But uh, we've got to draw a line in the sand. And contrary to what most Republicans would like for you to believe that um, Democrats are for open borders, that's not true. Uh, generally, I would say that uh, Democrats tend to be more about humanity maybe than my Republican counterparts. But we all recognize the need to have some uh, restriction on the borders. How could you not if you're a member of this society? But anyway, so something to think about. But let me just give you some thoughts here. In St. Lucie County, this is the demographic, demographic breakdown by party. There's 86,686 registered Democrats. There's 75,166 registered Republicans. And non-party affiliates are 59,256. That's really a big number for the uh, non-party affiliates. Uh, and I would venture to guess that that number has expanded considerably in the past four years. Uh, but as you can see, while it seems like the elections don't always bear it out, the majority of the registered voters in the county are Democrats. So uh, that's, that's kind of interesting. So we now have a new mayor, and her name is uh, Shannon Martin. Steve was just talking about her. I know Shannon a little bit. Um, I was uh, raising cane about the sidewalks over in my area and about doing something about the traffic at the corner of Tulip and uh, Port St. Lucie Boulevard. And both things eventually were resolved. And I'm thankful for that. They continued those sidewalks all the way from 
Port St. Lucie Boulevard down to uh, Darwin Boulevard, which was way overdue because, you know, the high school's there. And I used to be really upset about the fact that those kids early in the morning, and you know, in the wintertime, uh, Cliff, it's dark. And, and they were walking in the street in the dark and there's a curve there. So I was always worried that some kid was going to get hit, but now we at least got the sidewalks there. So that that's something. Uh, so I'm I'm prepared to have an open mind about Shannon. There's some other things that uh, about her that I would uh, have to find a question about. I have some questions about. And hopefully I'll be able to bring her on to the program and see about what her vision is for uh, Port St. Lucie going forward. She's got a pretty good track record though. 10, what, 10 years on the city council. Not, mm. not bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and then it, when Orvik resigned or she's uh, been selected to fill out his term, which, which, which when it ends or she's automatically elected mayor it's almost like being re-elected without being elected the first time no no she's no she's only gets a chance to finish his term yeah she has to run again in 22. okay yeah yeah so she wow she, yeah she's got to run again in 22. uh but anyway and then in district th three we got anthony bona and uh travis uh walker are going to be in a runoff I, I find that very interesting. I, I I know this is a million years ago, and you probably won't even remember, but Travis and I ran against each other when I ran for District 3 back then. He talked about uh, running about 20 years ago or so. He did. They, yeah. yeah, it was, I ran, he was high school student then. And uh, uh, I ran against him, and uh, actually he beat me then, but it ended up being uh, Chris Cooper won the district but uh travis and i ran against each other then and uh, i've always i've always kind of liked travis because uh, his father-in-law and i and his wife his current wife which was his girlfriend at the time we all went to the same church at one time so uh i think he's a pretty good guy uh hopefully i will be able to get him and Anthony uh, on here before uh, the final runoff, which is going to be December the 7th. Very interesting, though. And Anthony just raised a truck full of money. Ooh. <laughs> uh, now, think about this now. And, and, and when I ran, I think I raised like $12,000. And that was like the most money anybody had raised in that race. I still didn't win, but I, I raised about $12,000. Anthony has raised $55,291 for a city council race. That's a lot of money. Uh, I was going to say, where did he get all that money? I never heard him on Swap Shop. No. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, on the other hand, raised about twenty nine thousand dollars. I was uh, concerned about their names being so similar. Tra Travis and tra uh, Tavarius, yes. Yeah, Tavarius and Travis. Yeah, yeah. Tavarius is gonna, you know. I hope he sticks around. I, I, I didn't get a chance to know him like I would. We talked a couple times on the phone. Um, but uh, I hope he sticks around. Uh, because we we need fresh faces in, in uh, on the political scene, that's for sure. I'm wondering if you should uh, maybe uh, recap the the topics for tonight that folks can comment on. Because well, when the phone rang, we, we did have one call. Yeah. But uh, the number is three four zero fifteen ninety. Okay. Uh, topic number one. Uh, it is advertised that. Port St. Lucie is a non-partisan uh, 
race, do you think Port St. Lucie is nonpartisan? Party num uh, question number two, well, actually it's not a question, it's a statement I've already gave you that I gave you the, the demographic splits for uh, party membership for the St. Lucie County. Topic number three, can we work together? What do you think it would take for us to work together? Topic number four, does truth matter to you? Does truth matter to you? Topic number five, what should we do about the Haitians? And finally, topic number six, with all the information that's come out about Donald Trump, if you're still a Donald Trump supporter, please tell me why. And we got Carlos on line one. Carlos, how are you, sir? What's going on, Rudy? I, I, I know we don't, we, a lot of times we don't see eye to eye, but I, I every time I, I listen to you, I, I appreciate you more. You sound more like a down to earth. Uh, the, uh, the situation in the border, the border, I, this is what I suggest. The Democratic uh, yeah, go ahead. River, even 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 each like a hundred bucks to go to uh, Jersey City or Hoboken, and 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 he cleaned up the city. I mean, he got rid of all the all the homeless people. So I'm thinking the border states they should give each of these people a hundred bucks, a plane ticket, and send them right to Washington D.C. Let them. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Maybe they can fix it. Once they see the problem, then they'll fix it. What do you think? What do you think we should do about homelessness, Carlos? Homelessness. I. I you see, it's, it's it's a lot of different things. It could be poverty, and it could be a lot of drugs, and it's a lot of mental situation. It's 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 a dice situation. I say, in my opinion, with all these billionaires that we got in this country, we should start like a little town or something, uh, build these uh, homes up, uh, build these buildings up, and give these people a, a, a roof over the head, and then limit, and then start going which one needs mental health, which one needs drug health, and which one is really there because they went through financial situations. You know what I mean? And help each one individually. I mean, if we could go to the moon and now we're going to go to the Mars, there's nothing we can't fix in this country. I agree. I Listen, I heard the new, uh, well, presumed to be new mayor of New York. His proposal is that there is a bunch of motels and hotels spread around the area that are vacant. And right. he said, yes, he said, we can get those in a livable condition for about a third of the cost of new construction. I will tell you this, though, uh, not to be unfair, but Reagan stopped the, the uh, building of affordable housing. And even here in Port St. Lucie, you know, a, a, a three bedroom rental is a couple thousand dollars a month. It's a couple thousand dollars a month. That's a lot of money. Rudy, you want to hear something even scarier than that? Yeah. Take a ride from US 1 from Jupiter all the way down to Broward County. Yeah. They're building these huge cities. Starting, starting these apartments, these are in houses, starting at four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. What does the government know that we don't know? Where are these people getting this money to pay this mortgage or this rent? I know, I know. Hey, Carlos, we got a couple of pretty high-priced places around here too. 
Right, I, I get that, but it, it's like just take a ride down US one from Jupiter all the way down to Broward County. You see these cities popping up everywhere, and, well, and they got movie theaters in them. They got a mall in it. Where where these people getting these jobs to pay these mortgages? I I don't see it. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Well, they know something we don't know, Rudy. So Carlos, and and, they're, and 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 it's not like they're vacant; they're, they're being filled up. Yeah. Where these people coming from with all this money? Yeah, you know, well, since I got you on the phone, I, I, I want your, I, I consider you a reasonable Republican, unlike some that I think are right unreasonable. With, with all that you've heard about Trump now, are you still a Trump supporter? Yes, and I'll explain, and I'll explain to you why. Okay, that's what I'd like. He, he pushed. He pushed one law. I, mean, I, I, I can name like 10 or eight things that he's done for the blacks and, and brown people of this country. But he pushed one law through. That law to get everybody out of jail to just hold pot. Come on, and they've been in jail for years just selling pot, Rudy. When you had all these Republicans and Democrats, how much for eight years in office and didn't do nothing? He did something for our people, Rudy. Yeah, and if and if you look and if you look at the numbers, blacks and Hispanics under Trump bubbled up. They they bought houses, they bought businesses. You, you see, Trump, 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 Trump is a racist. The only color he sees is green. That's it. That's what he's a racist on green. That's it. That's the only color he sees is green. Okay. You don't care what color you are, as long as you can make that mighty buck. He, I really feel that he did I, I, I could probably name 10 things that he did, and I can't name three things that Obama did in, in eight years, but I can name 10 things that he did in four years. No, oh, come you on. You can't name things. Man, that, you know, you're the man signed off of them, and they still hold it on them. Can't, you can't name anything Obama did? Yeah, I, 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 can, I can name two that I, that, I really, that I really appreciate that he did. And I give him all, first he, he killed Osama. I, I give him that. I give him all the props in the world. Second, he got he got rid of the most my no uh, the most uh, illegal immigrants ever in the history of this world. He, he didn't let these suckers come in this country. Okay. I I give him props for that. Well, boy, you're see that's why I do like you, even though we disagree a lot. Most conservatives will not admit that he. Uh, uh, deported a lot of uh, people. They won't even admit it. Yeah, well, they don't. They, they don't admit it. They say he was the problem when he was actually. They the uh, Hispanic people called him the deporter in chief. So, but but okay. So I'm going to let you. You want to know why they the Republicans think that way? And and I I, I work with Republicans and Democrats. I'm explaining to you why. Because they he said, oh, let the dreamers come in. We'll give them paperwork. And there were these people lined up at the border coming in because he said, oh, you come in. The border's open. He sent them back. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's intelligent. Yeah, well, you ought to read it. You want to really get some insight into his intelligence. Read his book, his autobiography. The man is just absolutely brilliant. And you'll understand why he had a country, a, uh, a, a uh, administration I free of any I, corruption. Can I say two things before I hang up? Okay. First, I didn't know you ran for any any office. I I told you many years I'd be behind you. I'd be a Republican sticking up for you. And uh, second of all, uh, Obama, I I respected him. I didn't agree with a lot of things he did. But I, I do respect them, and I work with a, with a lot of African Americans, and they uh, a few of them don't like them, and they told me something. And they told me that he's not a true African American because his father comes from another country. He doesn't know what slavery is. It's not in his blood, and his mother's white. That's what I was told. Well, so they said that he didn't really do a lot for the African Americans. And in the eight years that he was here, they're still in poverty because he, he didn't feel the same thing that they felt. He, he has no, not even an ounce of, of slavery blood in him. That's, that's, uh, I'm just telling you. 
Well, I could do I could do a whole show just on that statement right there, but I'll let that I'll let that go. But uh, I would say, uh, first off, uh, having right. been in that position several times in my life, when you are the first in a position of leadership, you you carry the burden. If you're the first African American in a position of leadership, you carry the burden of knowing that if you don't do a good job, they will not give somebody else a chance. So not only do you have to con be concerned about how well you perform, you have to be concerned about how well you perform so that in the future, somebody else will get a chance. So some of the things that he may have wanted to do, he couldn't do because he had to carry that cross. Uh, now, if you've never been in that position, and I've been in that position at least three times, where I was the first African American in a position to lead an organization, and I felt that burden greatly, that uh, I had to be successful or the people behind me weren't going to get a chance. So uh, I understand that. But in terms of understanding who he is, please take some time to just read one of his books. And then what somebody was telling you about him is, is a person that has not done any reading or lacks understanding about a lot of things with respects to African Americans. But thank you very much, Carlos. I got another caller. You got him, Rudy. Have a nice day. Okay. And we got Winnie. Winnie. How you doing? How y'all doing? Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, that uh I know you said that uh Obama don't have no trade no blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but you know how that goes. You know, but still, he 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 you said yeah, we should we that. should keep them here or send them back. And we need, you know, I see a lot of these places you got now hiring, now hiring, and and get they get get some jobs that you know help them share and take care of their families and things like that. Here, that's my opinion. Okay, so you, so so you, so you think we should? And uh, I, I'm not, a, I'm not that uh, I'm not a Donald Trump supporter anymore. That's like that, gone, gone, gone away from me. I, I would like the Democrat. Yeah. Poor say they don't have no low income. They said something about how they don't have no low income housing over there. Why, 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 why is that? Oh, as you put. But here in Fort Pitt, they got all kind of projects. They got low income here, low income there. Why don't have nothing like that in Fort Pitt? What do you mean? What Louis what Louis. don't we have in Port St. Lucie? They don't have no low income housing. Oh, oh yes, that's a problem. Well, because for the large part, uh, I don't think many of the residents want it. And one of the things really that makes Port St. Lucie unique for a city of its size, there's no ethnic communities. Now, if you grew up in Miami or Chicago or Philadelphia or New York, they all have ethnic community communities. They got Chinatown, Germantown, Polish area, you know. They all have that and in Port St. Lucie. We, we don't really have that. Now, one of the things that you were saying, I, I find intriguing, which is you're saying about all these open jobs. And I, you know, we've got three major companies coming to our area. We got FedEx is opening a facility here. 
Cheney Brothers is opening a facility here and Amazon's opening a facility here. There's gonna be lots of jobs. Now, from what I understand, I read uh, today about the jobs with Cheney Brothers. You know what Cheney Brothers is? That, that's the organization that brings food to uh, restaurants. So you see those big uh, tractor trailers will say Cheney Brothers on it. So that's what they are. So they must be opening a, a warehouse uh, so that they can provide uh, food supplies for some of the restaurants around here. Those jobs, from what I understand, are going to be, some of them are going to be averaging like $50,000 a year. So it's going to pay pretty good. It's probably going to be pretty tough work, though. But I, I, the point you, you're making in it, there's probably some, some point to that, is that if the Haitians were to stay, there's jobs. Since people are having a tough time getting people to fill jobs, some of the Haitians could probably take some of those jobs. But I don't know. I have, again, I have really mixed emotions about that. Uh, so you see, uh, you see uh, the Biden and having to let the Haitian stay? I think we're going to allow some of them to stay, stay. I'm not sure about the criteria they're going to use that's going to allow the Haitians to say, stay, but I do believe they're going to allow some Haitians to stay. Listen, you know, as, 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 as I am concerned about the influx of immigrants. I mean, we're taking all of these Afghanis, now we got Haitians, so we more and more and more coming. Uh, but we have to do something. You know, what they've been through is, is really tough. You know, part of what and a lot of people don't understand, Haiti had to pay the French for their right to be a free country. And they were labeled with that burden, that financial burden for all these years. I don't think, I think they finally gave them freedom from that burden about five or six years ago. But all these years, Haiti had to pay that money back to the French in exchange for the French allowing them to be free. That has always crippled their economy. So it's always been hard for them to, to get up on their feet and not to mention the fact they all also have had some pretty corrupt leaders. But uh, recently they've gone through some difficulties that through no fault of their own, like the two earthquakes have just been devastating. You know, so I, I don't know. Uh, but like I said, the other thing I said, which is uh, Carlos and I talked about briefly, while I have compassion for other people, I think about those people in LA in tents sleeping on the sidewalk. Can't we do something about that or about the people that are homeless in New York City that in the freezing cold in the wintertime, they got no place to stay? Uh, we, we need to be able to do something about our own people too. I think that's really important. Uh, well, but thank you, Winnie. Th thank you for calling, Winnie. You're always a pleasure. All right. So that number again is 340-1590. Um, I don't know. The world's a very complicated place, but I, I, I want to say this, though, about can we come together? Steve put a, a, a positive spin on it by saying, you know, well, not a spin. He made, just made a very positive statement saying, yes, we can if we all act like Americans and not act like uh, uh, tribal members. I think there's some truth to that. But I think the thing that's really important and it's one of my topics, does the truth matter anymore? You know, 
when I started my insurance career, I was an adjuster. And on occasion, I negotiated settlements with uh, attorneys, big and small cases. And one of the things that I learned in negotiating a case with an attorney was, if you could agree on the basic facts, as you began your negotiation, you were already halfway to the finish line. Now you might struggle with coming up with numbers that we both agree on, but if you can agree on facts and get that out of the way, okay, this is how this accident happened. And we agree that this accident happened in this manner. Once you can agree on that, you got a chance to come to a resolution. If you can't agree on the facts, trying to come to a resolution is just about impossible because you have no basis to operate. So if somebody says that all elections are rigged, which is not a basis of fact, but you choose to believe that because that's part of your tribal duty to support statements made by members of your tribe, there's no chance. We're already in a losing battle if we can't accept basic truth. So for those of you out there who still believe that the election was rigged, when there is no evidence whatsoever that it was rigged, and I don't know if you heard it today, but uh, to a couple of those attorneys uh, that was running around talking about bogus voting machines, they're getting their fanny suit off right now. Sidney Powell is in, uh, in the throes of what could end up being a multi-million dollar uh, lawsuit because she was making allegations against the voting machine manufacturer that weren't true. Now, when she, a good friend of mine, uh, he was really disappointed with me. And as I, as he was disappointed in me, I was disappointed with him. He sent out a post with Sidney Powell's statement about voting machines. Well, I had already done some research and I knew that that was absolutely false. And, and I asked him, well, why, why do you believe that? He said, I, 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 I'm just a, a guy trying to make a living. And I go, what does that have to do with you making a living, believing some hocus pocus like that? And for the first time, and I've known him for over 20 years, that we had a little bit of a strain in our relationship behind that. And now we find out that it was all hocus pocus. There was no truth at all to it at all. And these, the, the voting machine manufacturers are going after these attorneys, and I'm glad they're doing it. And I hope I, you, you don't like to see think, bad things happen to people, but I hope they snatch her law license for standing up there in the public stating to everybody this garbage about the falsity of the voting machines when it wasn't true. And their argument is, and it's a cogent argument, is that their business was hurt because of the allegations being made by Sidney Powell and others about the uh, voting machines being uh, rigged. So, but again, so I say all that to say truth. When you can start with truth, Lord, we have a chance. We have a chance to come together. You were going to say something, Cliff? Oh, well, the, the truth always seems to hurt. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. But, but that's what truth does because it straightens out and finalizes the situation. And we, 
when you seek truth, that's when you really get into trouble. <laughs> yeah. You really get into trouble if you seek truth. However, I, I think we can kind of discern it out. We just have to trust our instincts because that's all we have in some cases. <laughs> well, listen, one of the things that uh, has like really freaked me out, and I've talked about it before, the two issues that have really freaked me out has been people fighting about people getting health health uh, health care and people turning COVID into a political issue. I I don't understand how you could turn a virus into a political issue. It's a virus. It's a medical issue. It's a medical. That's the truth. It's a medical issue. It's a medical issue. It's not it, a philosophical thing. It's not at all. Not, wow. What does your party have to do with COVID nineteen? Nothing. COVID nineteen doesn't discriminate over who it's no. going to attack. No. 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 So, and and that just goes to show you though how deep the chasm is between uh, Republicans and Democrats when somebody can get that adamant about a virus. And we've had, you know, I, I, I don't recall for Trevor here, but I know certainly recall growing up in, in Philadelphia in the New Jersey area, and I also know about Massachusetts, you had to have a certain amount of shots before you went to school. I remember getting my polio drink. I remember all those shots we had. I actually had chicken pox and measles. I, I, actually, I even had mumps. Yeah. But over the years, we got our inoculations, and then our children, then we raised our children, and, and we know they took a whole lot more inoculations than we did. Yes. And there, there was even a, a special one they had to have when they were like 13 or 14. You know, yeah, and and this COVID is going to be something like that because they're already testing it on the children, seeing if it's safe yeah. for the children, and uh, maybe a smaller doses, whatever. It's the science you got to follow on that. You can't follow the emotions; your emotions will mislead you. And our governor, uh, I quite quite frankly, our governor is a personal embarrassment to me. He's standing up for the 30 percent of people that are opposed to uh, vaccinations but he's an embarrassment because he has made the situation worse with his obstinate hard-headed stand about uh mask and about uh treatments i, I mean listen it, i think when he told the cruise line that they could not prohibit passengers who were not uh, vaccinated, I thought that was absolutely bizarre. Why, why would you do that? That just is, makes no sense. And that, that goes back to the thing about truth. So I don't understand why you would do that makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever but uh it is what it is but our, our 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 governor is is really really an embarrassment and my my friends from new york call me and uh uh ask me about him all the time and we got carlos again yes sir okay real quick because i know i only got six minutes uh a vaccine when i was growing up and if you open up the dictionary it means a cure like you get a vaccine for polio, swim in any lake, when you got polio, you never get polio. It's cured. This is not a vaccine. I know Trump pushed it and all that, and God, you know, God help him. But this is not a vaccine. It, it's not a vaccine if you get it, and you can still get sick. It's not a vaccine. That's all I have to say. I, 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 I'm going to hang up and, and just listen. Thank you. Thank you again, Rudy. God bless. Okay. Well, that was an uneducated statement. And shame on you, Carlos. When when they say something has a ninety percent efficacy, which is the statement made about 
the Pfizer vaccine, that means 10% failure. 90% success and 10% failure. So yes, there is a fail rate. There's a fail rate for most vaccines. Uh, it might be smaller percentages, but all of them have somewhat of a fail rate. So to say what you said, Carlos, was just not enlightened. Um, you know, the uh, Pfizer was given like a 90% efficacy. So uh, that's a very high success rate. And when you get to that point, it really is basically a cure. You know, you, you're going to have some people that fall off the wagon there, but I don't know of anything that is 100% 100% for sure. I don't know, but uh, in any event, so I I would just again like to say uh, we we need to find truth. Truth truth is important, and I think if we can find truth, we can find some harmony and we'll be able to find some ability to do some things together, that's for sure, if, if we can uh, find truth. And we got Ken. Kevin. 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 Yes, Kevin. Quick, because we're coming to the end of the hour. Our, Go ahead. Our government isn't, the government and our governor isn't here to coddle us. He's here for, for freedom and liberty mandating vaccines and, and all this stuff it's it's not liberty it's not freedom it's not what america is about people should have the right to choose and be educated and educate themselves on whether or not to get it i'm going to leave it at that freedom and liberty that's what that's what florida is about i just should get out mandating everybody to get something is not what freedom is Bye. okay well uh I, Great on the time there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I I understand what you're saying, Kevin, but um, I can remember when they started making us wear seatbelts. And there was a groundswell of uh, resistance to wearing seatbelts. Good example, by the way, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> but they kept pushing it and kept pushing it. Now... Everybody gets in their car and they put their seatbelt on. And and it's not a big problem. We're not rebellious no, over it. No. We're, we're not angry. Did, did they take, they took away our freedom to ride in a car without seatbelt on? The freedom to be thrown out of your car in an accident and, and <laughs> drag your body across the road yeah. and, you know, things like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, we do have to, as a society, uh, sometimes surrender freedoms for the betterment of the whole, for the betterment of the whole of society. Do you have a constitutional right to die with a respirator in your throat? You know, <laughs> well, think people think. Yes, folks, <laughs> I'd like to thank you so much for listening to the African-American scene. God bless, be safe, and I will see you next Wednesday right here for the African American Scene. The African American Scene presented every Wednesday evening in the 6 o'clock hour, and we're going to be telling you soon about a move this show will be making. Yeah, it's going to be moving soon, and we don't want to confuse you about it, so we'll wait. This is, by the way, WPSL Port St. Lucie.